What's up y'all, Riley here, and today I wanna to talk about whether or not the Jeep Gladiator is a good vehicle for long-term overlanding. So for those of you who don't know, Hannah, my wife and I, just got back from a six week Florida coast to Oregon coast and back overland trip where we primarily lived out of our rooftop tent, um, did mixed camping, so campgrounds, backcountry, and we also couch surfed with some friends a little bit. So for six weeks, we lived out of this vehicle. And as two adults with full-time jobs, that was a little challenging. So I'm here to talk about why, if I do it again, and my overall thoughts on that, as well as discuss how the Jeep did over those 7,500 miles. To get started, I have a couple of criteria that I think are important in an overlanding rig. Um, as well as some unique factors to Hannah and I, our travel style, our lifestyle, and our jobs. So I just wanna create some context before jumping into what I think about the Jeep after spending six weeks living in it. So our criteria are, in their most basic form, the range of the vehicle. So how many miles can I drive on a tank? And this is important for two reasons. One, you don't wanna be stopping every two to three hours when you're on the highway. And two, when you do venture off into the backcountry, you wanna make sure that in those areas where you can't get readily available gas, you can get out there and get back without any issue. Obviously you can um, create a little bit of wiggle room there with aftermarket gear. So whether that is gas roto packs, a long range fuel tank from somewhere like Long Range America, whatever, there are some things in the aftermarket community to um, kind of fix the Gladiator shortcomings there. Um, reliability, and so far we've had two Gladiators. On this particular Gladiator, we have put nearly 32,000 miles on it in 18 months, and we have no significant issues. We have some, you know, standard Jeep noises here and there and that kind of stuff, but nothing that I would consider a failure or something that concerns me when I head off grid. Um, capability, so can the vehicle safely get me where I want to go and back? The Gladiator, Gladiator is obviously kind of the creme de la creme there of overlanding vehicles. It's supremely capable. It's a Jeep, the solid front axle, the locking uh, differentials, all that stuff comes together to create a very capable vehicle. The storage capacity. So with Hannah and I both traveling, the storage capacity of our overland rig is very important. Um, the truck bed helps a lot. For six weeks, I'll get into whether or not I think it's enough. And then the aftermarket support that is available for a particular brand and model of vehicle. The Jeep obviously has superb aftermarket support. It is, um, if you want it, somebody makes it. Even if you don't want it, somebody makes it. There's just seemingly endless uh, modifications out there for this platform and more are being made every day. So as far as aftermarket support, Jeep Gladiator, A+. We are two travelers that were living in this vehicle full time, so that is a factor. Um, if it was just me, the factors might be different. Um, we both have to work full time while we're on the road. So when we travel, it is not like a vacation. It's not even like part time work. We have to work full time, which means that we have to be on our laptops, um, have frequent access to Wi Fi and the whole nine there. So that is a definite factor. Um, we were traveling through diverse climates. So we started in Florida, traversed our way through the southeast got into the middle of the country, then into the Rockies, and then finally to the West Coast. That is a lot of ground to cover and a lot of climates to go through. So Southeast, hot, humid, sticky, not super great in a tent. The Rocky Mountains, cool at night, dry, beautiful. Pacific Northwest, rainy, you know, and it's also high desert in parts of Oregon. So dry and hot. So we traverse through a lot of different climates. That's a factor in terms of our overlanding setup. Um, we spent a lot of time in the cabin of this Jeep, working, 
driving, just living when the weather's bad, um, climbing into the Jeep for a little bit of added safety. And then finally we did mixed camping as I already mentioned. So that brings us back to the main question, which is, is the Jeep Gladiator a good long-term overland vehicle? And I wanna preface this with, this is my opinion based off Hannah and I's experience. If you're doing shorter trips or you are a solo traveler, or maybe you just have different factors at play than us, such as you don't have to work full time, your answer might be different. Our answer is a very reluctant, no, it is not suitable for long-term overland travel. And by that, I mean, once you push it past about three weeks, it doesn't work so well. And here's why we came to that conclusion. First and foremost, the interior of the Jeep is very cramped which would wear on you over 7,500 miles anyway. But when you throw in the fact that we have to work while on the road, we simply do not have enough space to take out a lap desk, put your laptop on it, and try to work for any substantial amount of time in the cabin of this Jeep is next to impossible. It just doesn't work. Um, it's also hard just in general to get comfortable if you've ever driven or ridden in a Jeep for a long period of time, you know that the seats are narrow, they're not super comfortable, and the Mojave in particular has extra bolstering in the seats. So that is an even bigger issue. Um, great for off-road, not so great for prolonged road trips. Um, secondly, our camping setup is phenomenal for two to three weeks and under. The tent is the best tent we've ever had. The Alley Cab makes organization super simple, streamlined, easy. It's great. Um, however, when the weather is bad and we have to work, we can't. Now, we could come up with a partial solution to this. For example, we could invest in an awning, awning room, maybe go to an Alley Cab camper system instead of the cap with the tent. All those things would help but when it's storming, when it's super hot out, or when you've been on the road for over a month, those things even have their limitations. So our camping setup is great, especially if you don't have to work. In fact, I would say that it works just fine long-term if you don't have to consistently work full-time. However, in our situation, that was not the case. In short, we truly love our Jeep Gladiator, and I don't wanna step on any toes or ruffle any feathers, so I'm being totally honest when I say, for a lot of you, the compromises as far as the work setup and the camping setup might be worth the trade-off for the Gladiator's capabilities and the charm of the Jeep brand and the other positives that come with this platform like the aftermarket support. For us, however, with our ambitions to stay out on the road for not just six weeks, but months at a time while working full time, the Gladiator just doesn't cut it. If we could, we would keep it and we would use it for two weeks, three weeks and under, but that just isn't realistic in um, our scenario where both of us work full time and we only really need one vehicle because we do most of our traveling together. Long story short, Hannah and I love our Jeep Gladiator and we've had a blast both building and using it, especially on this last trip. However, with the way that we want to travel in the future, I do think that we need to make some changes. So be on the lookout for some pretty exciting news coming here soon. And uh, in the meantime, if you agree with my analysis of the Gladiator, drop a comment below. If you disagree, let's get that conversation started. Either way, I'll see you on the next video.